This is the winemaking facility that is owned by Benziger. It's actually at their imagery property. The white on the outside of these tanks are insulation to control the help can keep it cool because there are cooling jackets in there to keep the tanks cool during fermentation because during fermentation it does heat up. But this is the whole winemaking crush pad right here and the whole winery is actually outside. The only thing that's inside is uh, when they put the wine into the barrels. Right up along here, this is where the trucks come in. They pull up to this large bin here. The boxes on the back of it are tipped into here, goes down here to the screw on the bottom, and it moves the grapes along, right, moves it along this worm drive, into here, by the time it comes into here, it's already starting to get broken up a little bit, then it goes up the chute. And then once it gets up to the top there, this is really for making their white wines. They make a lot of Sauvignon Blanc. Then they'll send the grapes to one side or the other into one of these big tubes. These are presses. There's a large bladder inside. These are bladder presses. And it will drop the grapes in there and then they'll start expanding the bladder. And then the, let's come around this side. You see here where the juice will come out at the bottom there, into there, comes out with pumps, and then the juice will be pumped from there up into these tanks. These are the fermentation tanks. Now, they don't have to add yeast. There usually there's enough yeast right on the grapes, but oftentimes they do to start the fermentation. The tops of these tanks are open so that the gas can come out, the carbon dioxide. If they use a, uh, a prepared yeast, it might take two to three weeks to ferment. If they're using the native yeast, it might take six or eight weeks to ferment. And then once it's fermented, then they'll drain the juice away through one of those valves. The tanks are all stainless steel. The valves can cause practically as much as the tanks. They'll drain the juice off. You go into a tanker from here and they'll go off and be put into barrels. And then they'll open that bottom and they'll shovel out, once they vent it completely for gas, because their carbon dioxide gas is dangerous, then they'll shovel out the uh, remaining uh, grapes and stems and such. You know, the debris. If it's white, it's pressed right here, so the juice is pretty clear. But it does take a lot of clearing, or what's called clarifying. It will be uh, drained off in such a way that they clarify it. it they may add in a clarifying agent, maybe a bentonite clay, or the old tradition is to use um, uh, egg white, and it will actually precipitate out the solids. But that's really much, that's it. It's a, a, a wonder of stainless steel. They use this for only a short period of time each year during the harvest, you know, for two to three months before it goes into the barrels and the wines start aging. And then when they're in the barrels, there they have to go through weekly and fill it up because you get evaporation because you don't want oxygen getting close to the wines. During the fermentation, of course, the carbon dioxide acts as a large cushion on top of the tank, keeping oxygen away. But later on, you gotta keep it protected from the oxygen because it'll basically make the wine rust. That's what oxidation is. Cool, huh? Wine making, 101.